Coming up on the show, the real reason Goldberg won the Blue Universal title at Super Showdown. It's money. Were WWE keeping Samoa Joe's suspension secret even from creative? And the Young Bucks reveal when exactly they knew Marty Skrull wasn't coming to AEW. And it's sooner than you thought. Support Wrestle Talk. Give us a subscribe. Hello and welcome to the Wrestle Talk Trustworthy News. I am El Fakador Laurie Blake. So, as you may or may not have seen, depending on your feelings towards WWE Saudi Arabia shows. And remember, they're not paying you, so you can tell the truth here. You hate it, don't you? You hate them. But on yesterday's Super Showdown, the biannual torpedo to whatever you thought the storyline was in WWE right now, Goldberg told The Fiend he was next and no locker in the whole of Riyadh was safe. Now, after four spears and a jackhammer, The Fiend was Bray Wyatted out of existence and Goldberg is now the new Universal Champion again and again it was bad storytelling from WWE. Not that I really mind Goldberg winning as it does now put me ahead in Wrestle League, but let's just have a brief moment of silence for the brilliant and shortly lived Fiend character. Not now, Bill! Admittedly, Goldberg did try to put over his opponent on the way out. In a backstage interview, he said, first thing, I'll be limping out of Saudi Arabia. Now, I'm not exactly sure where he got this limp from, considering the only place he was actually attacked during the match was in his mouth twice. So, unless the sort of, the tongue works in much the same way as your spinal cord does and has a surprising amount of control over your lower extremities, I'm putting the limp down to Goldberg's greatest foe of all, age. But this big win does actually beg the question, what the actual f is going on? Because again, thanks for the Wrestle League point, Bill, but what the f is going on? This does seem to all confirm the rumour going round that Bill will be set to take on Roman Reigns, and now The Fiend will face John Cena at WrestleMania, the show of shows. The show that people are getting less interested in over time. Now, Dave Meltzer from Wrestling Observer Radio said yesterday, the top two SmackDown matches are going to be Bill Goldberg against Roman Reigns, so Bill Goldberg is on WrestleMania now, and John Cena against Bray Wyatt, which means that Goldberg and Reigns will be the big championship match and could likely main event the show. It also means that Roman Reigns is probably going to win the Elimination Chamber match next Sunday. Foreshadowing. And this whole change about comes after that initial rumble plan of having Reigns win to set up a match with The Fiend was changed 10 days before that show because maybe, I don't know, WWE wanted to start off the year fairly controversy free. And where are we now? And then after that, you had Goldberg make his appearance on SmackDown, which popped the ratings so hard they changed absolutely everything because ratings are our lord and savior. And that's why Goldberg is now coming to SmackDown tonight, bringing his fancy new belt with him. Oh, bless us with your ratings, great watcher in the sky. We have Bill Goldberg for you, an offering for you. Now, Meltzer's scoop also means that Cena will not only be lacing up his boots for his appearance on SmackDown, down tonight too, he's probably also going to be zipping up his jorts for Mania as well. Now, to my mind, the better story of all those options would have been Cena chasing his 17th championship to beat the 16-time record that he currently holds jointly with Ric Flair as co-besties. Cross-generational co-besties. Because then it would be the man who never gives up against the monster who won't stay down, except when he does against Goldberg. Still not over it, still not... Not necessarily over it. But instead, we've got a one move of doom match with button mashes just spamming them. Wrestling. Am I right? Before we crack on, we just need to thank Arn K. The K stands for the coolest dude ever for being one of our awesome pledge hammers on Patreon. Thank you very much. Now, someone who won't be lacing up anything for a few weeks is Samoa Joe, the current owner-operator of a wellness policy violation. Now, this is a story that's been brewing for a little while since WrestleVotes reported earlier in the month that more WWE wellness policy suspensions were inbound following Andrade's in late January and Robert Roode's before that, which he used to get really massive arms from the looks of. Now, WrestleVotes also suggested that Joe was one of the violations, which was then vociferously denied by WWE sources to PW Insider in what seems to be an ongoing disinformation campaign regarding well-known leakers. But that's not actually the new bit of this story, because not only was WrestleVotes vindicated in this case when WWE announced Joe's suspension, but WWE's blanket of secrecy over Samoa Joe's violation seems to have extended over some of the departments within the company too. Because 
Wrestling Observer Radio said that the creative team didn't find out about this suspension until it was announced by WWE because it's not like they need to know or anything. It's not like they have long-term plans to think of, stories that are, oh wait, it doesn't matter. Everything just gets thrown out on a Monday morning anyway. So it must be actually pretty easy to write him out. Storytelling is basically modular now in WWE. If you need to swap out a part, it's no big deal. Just comes right out. What do you want to put in there now? Kevin Owens? Okay, Kevin Owens is in there. There we go. Story cracks on. So all the way down the line in this story, it seems like WWE officials knew about this suspension in early February, but that obviously hasn't been confirmed because in fact it's actually been vehemently denied, vociferously denied. So you would think that one month is, I don't know, plenty of time to give creative a heads up. But instead this is one of those rare cases where it's like, I'm sorry creative, we have nothing for you. As it stands at the minute, Joe is able to return from his suspension in late March, but whether he would be able to, considering the recent concussion he suffered at the end of January, remains to be seen. Something that also remains to be seen is the March 11th episode of NXT. That is just a very true chronological order segue. Why is this important? Well, I'll tell you, it's because it was up in the air as to where the episode would air from. You see, it's Full Sail University's annual Hall of Fame week, which runs from March March the 8th through to the 13th, which means they're going to be using the Winter Park Arena on campus for the event where NXT is usually filmed. We're at their own Hall of Fame event, they'll no doubt be inducting Hulk Hogan twice, but cramming China in as part of a, a larger group, because porn is bad, but racism is a-okay. Thankfully, NXT was able to full sail off to pastures new, and Triple H announced after Wednesday's NXT episode that the show would instead be a special fan appreciation night and emanate from the WWE Performance Center in Orlando. They've got four rings there. So it's basically like a double War Games match, minus the giant cage. But the metaphysical cage of your WWE contract is ever-present and looming, though. And maybe this four-ring dog pile and special fan appreciation event could give NXT a little boost in the ratings. As this week, the show was down as NBA returned to screens after a week off due to the All-Star break. Now, NXT averaged 717,000 viewers, which is a drop of 8%, and their lowest number in four weeks. And Things weren't exactly wonderful on the other side of the fence for AEW either, might I add, as their numbers fell by 3% this week, with Dynamite averaging 865,000 viewers over the course of its two hours. However, it was the first time that AEW got a clean sweep in the demos, beating NXT in every single age group, including the over 50s, who have so far been hardcore NXT marks. I mean, this was no doubt helped by that honestly incredible Iron Man match between Kenny Omega and that busted pack. Staying with AEW now, who can't seem to live down the snub from elite member in absentia, Marty Skull, who decided to stay with Ring of Honor for a bigger slice of the creative control pie, when you would have imagined that AEW would have been offering some serious cashola for their friendly neighborhood villain to join them. However, as has been said before, there are no hard feelings between AEW's higher-ups and Marty, but in a recent interview with comicbook.com, we learned some interesting details about when exactly they knew that Marty didn't want to party. Now, Nick Jackson told the site. We were kind of feeling him out for a while, kinky, and he was always very vague with us anytime we would bring up storylines and stuff. So we pretty much got the hint three months or so ago and we realized, okay, he's staying put. Good for him though. And that he knows how we feel. It's a business. Yeah, it would have been great to have him with us because we're good friends, but he got a great deal out of it and he seems to be very happy. He's definitely going to try to paint his path on his own, and more respect to him for doing that. We're all cool though. Matt then added, I feel the same way. Marty got a great offer, and I think he wanted it to be more than just a wrestler, and he got an opportunity to do that. And I hope he can make the place he's working a better place. Bit of a little pointed barb in that final mention of Ring of Honor there. But as Matt says, with more creative control, Marty has an opportunity to improve Ring of Honor, which is in Spanish, destroy Ring of Honor. Oh my god, it's an invasion storyline. To close us out for today, we've got a match announcement for the Battle of Brit Rest, the live show we're putting on in London on March the 16th. Again, it is not a promotion from us, it is a showcase of some of the best British indies out there. And in association with the Fight Network and sponsored by Wrestling Travel, we are pleased to reveal that Frontline Wrestling, the promotion that came out of the mind of Will Ospreay, will present a mixed tag match with current Frontline champion Adam Maxted teaming with Mercedes Blaze to take 
Nikon Malik and Aaliyah James. And if all that tickles your fancy, I mean, it's got Adam Maxted in it, so why wouldn't it? It was on Love Island, don't you know? You can get tickets for the event at www.wrestletalklive.com or by following the link in the description down below. To sweeten the deal, I'm going to add the fact that me, Ollie, Luke, Pete, and Adam Blompier will be doing a live podcast before the show, and then I'm going to be getting very drunk. So come see me make a tit of myself. Twice! Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do us a flavor and leave us a like, drop a comment, and subscribe to the channel as all of those things help us grow and help us do more awesome stuff like the Wrestle Talk live shows. Also, head on over there for more Wrestle Talk content too. I have been El Fakador, and that was Lucha.